Welcome to the Fermented Homestead. If you're new here, my name is Anna, and on this channel, I'm sharing our journey of learning how to turn our home into a homestead. Today is going to be our third kind of, of corned beef that I'm bringing to you guys this month. This one is going to be made using this uh, pink curing salt. This one is kind of the more traditional, not traditional, like old school, like once upon a time kind of traditional, but this is the one that is the most typical one that people tend to use the most. And this is the one, I just use nitrates basically to preserve the meat. And that is something that is used very often in, in like cured meats and things like that. So this one is the one that is the most common. The other two that I brought to you before, which I will make sure to link down below, those ones are ones that are more like old school kind of recipes. Like those are the ones that were likely used in old, old, olden days. But anyways, I wanted to make sure that I brought you this one too because I wanna make it, I'm curious about it. So I got this pink canning salt or pink curing salt. And this one is the number one. I was doing some looking online and according to Mr. Google Pants, number one is for the short term curing. And whereas the number two is for more long term, like salamis and like the ones that you hang for a really long time. This is for more of the short term curing. So that's why you get the number one when you're buying it. I'll link the one that I bought down below. I just bought the one that I, I like this brand. So that's why I bought it. There's no other reason really other than that, that I bought it. So we're gonna go ahead and do this recipe. This is by Taste of Home. And it's just how to make corned beef, basically. In our pot, we have uh, one gallon of water. We're gonna double the recipe that's on here, but we're gonna do it slightly different so that we don't have to wait quite so long to add the meat to it. So the recipe for a single batch calls for one gallon of water. So we're gonna just put half of the amount of water into this pan. And then once it has warmed up, all the salt has melted, you know, everything's kind of, the flavors are marinated and married and all that kind of stuff. Then we're gonna add the other half of the water to it. So I'm just gonna tell you the ingredients that we have. I'm gonna link this down below so that y'all can uh, go and fetch this recipe if you wanna follow it. And so we're gonna use some kosher salt. This calls for kosher salt, but I have this canning and pickling salt. Same difference, basically. And then we are gonna use some brown sugar, some pickling spices, and then this pink curing salt. And then it also calls for four cloves of minced garlic. So we're gonna go ahead and just use the stuff that we have in the fridge. So it says to, in a large stock pot, combine water, kosher salt, brown sugar, two tablespoons of pink of pickling spices, because it calls for half of the spices now and then half of the spices when you're actually cooking it for eating. And then pink curing salt and garlic. Bring the brine to a simmer and stir until the salt and sugar are dissolved. So remove from heat and cool to room temperature. So that's why we're adding in half of the half of the water to it because then it'll rapid cool it basically instead of having to put it in the fridge like overnight. Uh, we can just wait like an hour or so and then it should be ready to use. So we're gonna go ahead and just put everything in the pot here. I spilled a lot. I just spilled all over my foot. I don't know if you can see it. Sugar. Sugar. One and a half cups of kosher salt. So, uh, for the pickling spice, I'm just using this. Uh, <coughs> it's the only one that we could find. So it's just McCormick pickling spice. It's not organic. I don't recommend it. It just is what I what we found. So we're just gonna warm this up on the stove. Uh, I don't know if we'll bring it quite to a simmer, but we'll just let it go for as warm as we need to in order to melt all the salt and the sugar, which is what it says to do. So I think I let this heat up just a little bit too much, which is totally fine. It'll just take us a little bit longer to let it cool off. You can see kind of the steam coming out, but the sugar's melted, the salt is melted. We're gonna add in our another gallon of cold water. It's just tap cold, it's not like ice water or anything. If you have ice, it's great to have use it. Let's see what temperature we got here. We're aiming for between room temp and body temp. Already it's too hot. It's 100 and, 107. It'll probably, it'll probably land about 108. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna let this cool off as long as it takes, and then I'll bring you back when we're ready for the next step. Okay, so our brine has cooled off, and now we're ready to go ahead and process our, um, our brisket. 
All we're gonna do with this is we're gonna go ahead and cut off a bunch, a fair amount of the fat. We don't need to get it all, but like, if we cut it off now, we can actually render the fat. But if we wait, I don't even, unless you like corned beef fat, I guess you could do it. But I would rather make use of this fat and render it down. I'm not cutting it all off, but I'm just cutting off a little excess. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna cut this up into, I don't know, four to five chunks here, just so that we can, it'll penetrate the meat a little better and just make it a little more manageable, you know? Okay, so we have our bucket. Now that we have all of our meat chopped up, we're gonna put about half of our frying here. And then we're gonna position the meat in here. It doesn't really matter how to do it. Cover it completely. And then we're just gonna find something to weigh this down with. Um, the last one I used a pie plate and a gallon Ziploc with um, brine in it, and that worked pretty well. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. We're gonna find something to cover it with, put the lid on it, and then we're gonna put it in, this one we're gonna put in the fridge for about 10 days. So this is, we'll, we'll go ahead and bring you back then. It's been probably about, I think about nine days since we left our uh, corned beef to corn, and I'm pulling it just a little bit early because I never actually made it into the fridge. It's been out in my cold garage, but never in my fridge. So actually now that I think about it, it's been eight days. So um, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna give this thing a try and we'll see how things go. We'll see how everything looks. I'm not opening this. I should have been turning it and churning it, but I was not. Okay, looks good. There's a little fat on top of me, maybe. Have a heart attack thinking it was mold. It is not mold. Mm. It smells perfect. Nothing weird about it whatsoever. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull this bag out here. Put it in our little container. There we go. Get the pie plate that is in here. Pull out a slab of this corned beef. It's already starting to float. Huh? No, not this one. This is the, the nitrate one. Okay, so you guys probably saw my other videos where I ate this raw. I'm just not comfortable eating the nitrate one raw. Sue me, but you know, <laughs> it is what it is. But now that I'm thinking about it, I probably will try a little bit. I'll try one little piece. How about that? We'll do a compromise. I'll try one little piece. And the rest of this, we're gonna cook. So one little piece of this, because I know it's not bad. I just, I don't like it. Okay, it's nice and pink. Okay, I'm gonna rinse it off. How about that? Still good, huh? <laughs> yeah. Mm. It just has that corned, salty flavor. Oh my gosh, this is so good. Okay. So I'm super pumped about this. I was really hesitant at first to do this, but I feel like this kind of gives you, this way of corning beef is more in line with like food preservation versus like the salted or the fermented one. Whereas those ones are more for like flavor, and for health benefits with the fermented one. So with this, I'm not gonna cook this for you guys today, but we are going to, I'm going to be cooking this in a video that's gonna come out 
or in a video that already came out. So I will link that one down below. You can see how I'm actually gonna be cooking this off. Um, so I'm really excited about this one because we're gonna make all kinds of recipes with this. There's gonna be a lot of different corned beef recipes that are gonna be coming up. Um, we're gonna be doing, we're gonna be making a Reuben. We're gonna be cooking this and making just like a corned beef and cabbage recipe. We're gonna be doing like a Reuben casserole. We're gonna be doing just all different kinds of corned beef recipes. So definitely stay tuned for that. We're gonna have a lot of really exciting, really delicious recipes coming up with all of this corned beef. The basic way that you can preserve this for the next like two weeks, you can keep it in the fridge and you can put that this inside of a Ziploc bag. You can also keep it in the bucket and it'll probably save for a long time. I'm not sure about that one, but I believe it'll save in the bucket for a tremendous amount of time um, in the salt brine. You can also, you can put it, take it out, you can put it in a Ziploc in the fridge and that will keep for about two weeks from what I'm told. Uh, the next step is you can also freeze it like you would any other kind of meat. You wanna like vacuum seal it, put it in a Ziploc, suck all the air out, you know, air is the enemy of food preservation. So you can also preserve it that way. And then um, you can can it. So there's lots of different options of what you can do from this point on. So I'm gonna go ahead and let you guys go so that we can start cooking this one for the next recipe that's gonna come out to you guys on thanks on uh, St. Patrick's Day. And so I hope that you guys enjoyed that recipe and maybe now you're coming to watch this recipe to see how we actually made it. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. And if you do, I hope you give it a thumbs up. It helps with all the googly algorithmic things. And if you guys are new around here, we do all kinds of food preservation videos. We do fermenting, freezing, canning, dehydrating, curing. Uh, this is the, my first real forte into curing is with the corned beef, but we can do all kinds of those sorts of things. And so if that kind of thing sounds interesting to you, make sure you hit the subscribe button. That's where all the fun happens around here. Up here is a video that Mr. Google Pants thinks that you're gonna enjoy. This video over here is another corned beef recipe that we have. It is actually going to be the recipe where we cooked this one. And then up here is going to be my uh, corned beef playlist that I have newly created because we have all kinds of uh, corned beef stuff coming up. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.